Hi, I'm Jess Klein, and today I'm going to talk to you about designing a future-friendly web maker. We know that this is not a web maker. Somebody who visits our website gets a little bit of information and goes away forever. But we know that this is a web maker, an engaged user who's coming here to learn something. We know that our web maker is not about a single device, that people aren't accessing it um, from one kind of computer and walking away. We know that the people are accessing it from many different kinds of devices. And in the future, who knows what people are going to be accessing it from. The power of web maker are users who are learning something. Making equals learning. And they're making things, but they're making better things. They're making things that contribute to the world in some way and something that they are, are proud of. They're making things, but they're making unique things, and they're making unique things all over the world. So when we talk about the future user, we're talking about a user who we may not exactly know who they are. We may not exactly know what they're designing on, um, and we don't know exactly where they're making it. So this presents a variety of design challenges for us, um, but our real mission this this year is designing a cohesive offering, integrating badges and learning, and really layering on a level of contribution and participation so that we can really access that larger community of users. But let's just take a look back at what we've already done in the past um, six months or so. So webmaker.org was launched as a hub site for self-directed and collaborative web making that occurred on multiple external sites. So as you can see here, we really combined lots of different things. We pulled in the x-ray goggles and thimble and popcorn um, and hackasaurus and the summer code party and we all pulled it together and built it out into this single hub site. Our initial audience um, for the summer code party release was, re was um, and I, I pulled this from the initial user flows, were awesome and fun seekers, people who were coming here to get tools and resources, and people who were looking towards us for thought leadership. The initial the re design questions were really built around, around designing this kind of hub site and building a more cohesive offering than we had at that time. Um, really, how can we present our current resources and and tools in a way that makes sense to a, a website visitor? How can we create the, a cohesive narrative that bridges the different tools and projects? And how can we tie our work into a campaign that will motivate people to, to get up and do something around um, web making and the open web? And so what we came out with is a beautiful website. Um, if you go to webmaker.org now, you'll see right on the landing page, information about the Summer Code Party. You'll see sections on projects, on tools, on events. You can join an event, start an event, and you can learn about the overall mission of, the, of, of webmaker.org. We did some initial user testing and evaluation, and we're going to continue to do some more. But um, what we found is that, that basically we set out, we've accomplished what we set out to do. People are coming to our events they are signing up in droves. They have an understanding that this is a site that is um, representing some sort of mission around web making and understands that Mozilla is an organization that is committed to um, creating learning experiences and activities where people can sink their teeth into and make something on the web. Um, but what we need to iterate on is that our current site really does reflect our organizational structure. It, it's a bit of a brochure site, and because of that, it is attracting more of the visitors. Um, it's designed essentially for a visitor experience as opposed to a user experience. We didn't, we don't have a clear um, audience definition on our site. We are appealing to youth through our projects, but we're also really appealing to um, adult users through our events in different sections of the site. The language. Um, a, you know, targets different kinds of users. And because of that, there are a variety of different calls to action. Um, and right now, there's learning in pockets, but we really haven't baked it into the entire experience. So our thesis moving forward is that if we evolve webmaker.org from a brochure site into a platform, we are going to turn our visitors into users who are learning something. And how we're going to do that is we're going to really get towards um, 
a place where we have audience definition. We know we have two coming out of the all hands. We really came away with two distinct audiences, basically the makers, um, people who are coming to webmaker.org to make something. So people who are similar to like the Tumblr user who is who's activated and comes away and wants to make um, that, you know, find out how to make that animated GIF or how to make that web page or the interactive um, video. And also those who are supporting that kind of activity. So um, the, uh, the hacktivators, as we're calling them, people who are possibly instructors or teachers, people who are really trying to engage that user. We're looking at precedents right now. We've already built a community mood board using Pinterest, and we're starting to see some themes um, emerging. We're seeing DIY and maker sites. We're seeing toolkits. We're seeing um, movements like 350.org where people can really get behind it and, and um, feel motivated and activated. And we're seeing things like playlists, like songs at turntable.fm, um, you know, places where a user could really curate their own experience. And from our new site, we're really, our new direction, our, and, and our evolved site, essentially, we are really starting to form some new, some new design questions. You know, how do we convert our visitors into users by turning this hub site into a platform? How can we introduce ideas like login and badges in a non-intrusive but playful way? You know, what happens to people who aren't interested in the work but are who are interested but aren't our target users or learners? How do we support them? How do we unify our projects that aren't intended initially to be unified? And really, how do we create a cohesive user experience that bridges, again, the, the, the tools and the projects? Um, we know to some degree how we're going to solve that. We know that we're going to be evolving the architecture and the um, user experience and the um, user interface. We're going to be designing unified logins, common terminology and controls across the tools, um, um, really so that we can incorporate the tools within one larger experience. We're going to be appealing to um, communities of interest, so the activators or the end users, and we're really going to focus our calls to action on making something. And through that, we're going to help develop um, opportunities for self-organizing and personalized curation. Um, all that said, you know, baked into that is this learning content, the pathways that could span multiple tools, multiple projects across all of our work. We're going to be looking into a, um, a universal navigation that is going to span across, across all of our web properties and apps. And so this way, a user basically has their dashboard, a portable dashboard for their web making experience wherever they are so that whatever property they are on, they can really see what projects that they've made, what badges that they've collected, what skills they've you know, gained. Um, and, and in the future, you know, have access to collaborators or have access to, um, you know, their unique dynamic projects that are of interest to them based on their skill sets and their, their, their declared skill, their declared interests. So all of this is moving forward. Obviously, we're not going to be like launching everything at once, but these are this is the general direction that we're heading. We're really aiming towards a more cohesive offering, one that is easily palatable by the variety of different kinds of users who come to our site and a variety of different kinds of community members that we already have. Um, and we are really, you know, striving to build that future-friendly web. So whatever, whatever form it takes, it's really going to have to be accessible in a variety of different platforms, a variety of different ways, and we have to really expand how we're going to be thinking about webmaker.org um, moving forward. But what the good news is, is that we already have a great um, foundation to build off of and that really it's a matter of evolving the design to accommodate our, our new and um, refined focus.